So I've got an image saved to my desktop. There we go. It's going to be this image. What I want to do is I want to be able to mask out an area around her figure. So I'm going to drag this down into Photoshop. Now I've got it opened up. The one palette that I need to have open is called my Paths palette. I've got it open on the right hand side, but if you don't see it, just like with any Adobe software, you can always go to Window and find paths that are down there. I'm going to drag this over so we can actually see it as I work. What I need to do is I need to be able to draw off the area that I want to be masked out. And to do this, I'm going to use my lasso tool. This is a selection tool. If you don't see it, it's probably hidden under one of these. But I'm going to use my lasso tool. I'm going to go very quickly, but I'm going to click and drag around her outline. Now if I spent more time, I could probably do a better job of getting everything looking relatively nice. I can use other selection tools that will give me a little more control over creating the outline. But let's say I just wanted to mask out that area and have her, uh, her shape be the, uh, the frame I'm working with. With it selected, go into your Paths outline and click the middle button. It looks like this one. It's a circle with some lines going through it. It's going to ask you to make the path from a selection. With it selected, you can see I've got a gray outline going around it, and I've got a new layer called Work Path. Believe it or not, this is a vector work path, just like in Illustrator. So I can actually choose, there's another selection tool, I'm going to choose my direct selection tool, and click on it, and there's the little vector points like you would have if you were working in Adobe Illustrator. Does that make sense? Pretty cool. And you can touch it up, change them around if you need to. Everything else, I'm just going to keep it the way it is. Here's the thing to remember. I've got a working path, but I need to name it something. So I'm going to double click on this. And by default, we'll call it path one. In this case, I'll just call it lady outline. And we'll say okay. So now I've got my path named. Here's the next thing to remember. To save these paths, we need to save it as a particular file format. If Right now, if I just saved it as a JPEG, it's not going to remember the path. I want to save it, go to File and Save As. For my format, I'm going to change it to a TIFF format. If you're ever working in any type of print publication, TIFF is a fantastic file format to, to work with. Um, JPEG, it will compress it and you'll actually lose information. TIFF is non-compressed. It's, it's called a non-lossy. And it'll also save your work outline. So I'm going to hit save and just say OK to those options. Now I'm going to close it out. So I've got our path saved. Let's see, here's my file that I'm working on. Let's go into InDesign. We are. Now I'll even make a new document that we'll work with from here. Remember to, to plop in a picture. We've got to have a rectangle frame tool, at least to start off with. Command D to drop it in. I'm going to drop in the TIFF and we'll say open. Now this picture happened to be a huge, huge picture, so that's why we're only seeing a small portion of it. If I was to click on it, you can see I can drag it around. I'd have to rescale it a lot. Remember the, the keyboard shortcut or the shortcut to do this. Look up in the top of your control panel and here's the auto fit proportionally. And so now I'll scale it down and it fits inside the uh, area I'm working with. I'll scale it up a bit just so we can see her. Now I can go about the same process that's in project two to creating an outline. So I've got this object selected. Go to object, choose clipping path because remember that's what we made, choose options. Now the type that we're going to choose, right now it's set to none, here's where the Photoshop path comes into play. With the Photoshop path selected, now it's masking out that area that I created. Pretty cool, right? So that's how you can easily create your own Photoshop paths from there. I can even say okay. I've got her masked out, but if I wanted to turn it into a frame, with it selected, you can go back to object, clipping path, and there it is to convert the clipping path to a frame. And So now it's a frame in itself. And of course her picture is inside of there. And you can move it around. Whoops, got the wrong tool selected. Make sure you got your black arrow tool. So I can move it around and use it from that way as well. All good? Nobody's printing, are we? Alright. So, 
that was one little trick that I wanted to, to teach you that goes a little further than what the book taught you for Project 2, how to create your own ones using specifically Photoshop. Like I said,